Good afternoon, YouTube. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty good. I got some requests, and I hadn't planned on doing it, but I will since I got so many. Uh, this video is going to be a tour of my truck and the trailer I'm currently attached to. Might be a little bit long because uh, I'm going to kind of be as detailed as I can without being too onerous. Um, it's a beautiful afternoon here in Little Rock, Arkansas, and uh, it's a perfect day to do it. Uh, so let's start with the exterior. All right, that's my truck. It's a 2013 Freightliner Cascadia. It's a bit dirty. Um, I've had some last couple of trips were on dirt and gravel lots, and when I came into the yard yesterday, the uh, wash bay wasn't working, so I wasn't able to wash the truck. So I apologize for any dirt you might see on the outside. Inside's probably not too clean either. At least the bed's made. But uh, as you can see, it's an XLT. It's a, not a condo. It's only got one bed in it. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start on the outside, include the trailer. This is a 48 foot aluminum flatbed trailer. If you'll notice, the trailer bent has a curve in it. And the reason that is, is when they put the load on it, it'll flatten the bed out. If you look at this one right here, see how much flatter it is from the weight of the of the uh, steel bars that are on it. Uh, these trailers are all pretty much exactly the same. They only vary in year model and whether they're steel. Down here, above the landing gear, is where we store our wood, our eight foot pieces. We generally carry two or three uh, square four by fours, okay? and the rest up to at least eight beveled timbers it's got a two inch flat on top and it's beveled in and then it's got a quarter inch on the edge there you might not be able to see it all that well because of the shadow but that's right that uh electrical cable on the ground is for my shore power plug-in so i don't run my batteries down on both sides of the box a tra trailer we have uh tarp boxes uh this side is where we keep the uh, lumber tarps those are them in there uh, dry they weigh about 100 120 pounds uh, they're big you might if you remember I did the folding tarp video a while back and these handles are sometimes a pain in the butt now a lot of guys do what I do they put these bungees on here to uh, kind of make sure in case the handles come come loose they don't pop open but uh, those crossbars are for our padlocks most guys don't use them unless we're uh, parking the truck and gonna be away from it for a weekend or something all of our trailers are split axle which means they're fixed they don't slide and uh, has one at one tire in the front and one in the back what that does that split allows us to carry up to 40,000 pounds on the back of the trailer it allows us to keep things moving back some the trailers are Pretty nice. We got some really good ones. This one's a Benson. Uh, we have some other types. Um, East and Fast and a few others. On this side is top boxes as well. This one here um, has our steel tarps and canvas tarps. Now these little boxes above on each side, um, generally they're going to hold four foot timbers. Um, small one by one foot uh, blocks that we use for separating. Uh, loads like that between the bundles as well as our friction mats That's pretty much it on these on the trailer you know, Standard landing gear. They don't go very far But uh, they have a tendency to to stick a little bit um, Maverick uses super singles on our tractors. I like them especially the x1s. They're really fuel efficient Not a big problem on the back of the tra uh, truck we have our headache rack and our chain and binder storage. In the box, we keep um, coil racks, uh, edge protectors over here, and coil pads in the back. I also keep my winch bar for uh, doing the winches on the trailers. These right here. Uh, we generally keep our splits, uh, stuff split up on this side. We, uh, just about everybody keeps their over center binders. On that side, everybody keeps their ratchet binders. And we put our chains in the middle. I have a little bit of extra equipment right now because I had a I picked up a 
preloaded trailer and didn't have anybody to give my equipment to to uh, make it match coming up on the outside this is the plug for shore power it allows me to plug the truck into a 110 volt outlet matter of fact that light pole right there is where I'm plugged into it allows me to run everything in the truck uh, without including the uh, air bunk air conditioner without running down my batteries let's take a look at the side panel right here's a switch and there's one on the opposite side as well and I'll show you that one too Uh, this is where our inverter system is. There's two parts of it. This is the shore power connection, okay? and this is the inverter. The inverter is uh, 1,000 watt. Some of the newer trucks have have uh, larger inverters. I think up to 1,500. And I keep my gloves, and my fuel in here as well. And in this milk crate, I keep things like extra oil, washer fluid, can WD-40. I keep my tape measure, and a couple other things. I also keep my hammer in there. Um, but uh, it's in the truck right now. I also keep my electrical cable in here when I'm not uh, plugged in, which is most of the time. On the other side, uh, door, which I guess I should have probably done that before I walked all the way around. And you'll have to excuse me. I gotta unlock the truck to uh, get to it. There it is. Everybody in the company on this side keeps all of our straps, our strap winder. Mine is a mess, because I put everything in here in a hurry the other morning. I also keep extra one buys for separation. You never know when you're gonna need them. You also use them for uh, coil restraints on shotgun coils. And that's pretty much it. This is a strap winder. I really don't use mine all that much. I prefer to wrap them up by hand. All right, let's uh, step inside. Alrighty. The uh, inside is just like any other decent truck. Everybody makes them different. Um, but Maverick has a few little things, especially the rules, uh, especially including the FMCSR. Uh, this is the permit book. It contains all the permits, information, and stuff for this truck, and uh, insurance and things like that. Let's climb up on in here. And we'll hop down in the driver's seat first. Ugh. Alrighty. Um, it's kind of dark in here, and I apologize for that. But I don't want to start the truck because it'll shut off the park smart. Um, it's got basic instrumentation, just like any vehicle. Um, of course, it's got stuff specialized for truck. Um, this is the regular dash horn, and up here is our air horn. I don't know if you can see it there as we go. All right, as well as everything else that goes along with these. We've got uh, transmission, temperature, oil pressure, uh, oil temp, and uh, water temperature and then up here we have our vo the voltmeter and if it's in the red you're in trouble this is our uh, tachometer speedometer and this is the airbag pressure system for the tractor airbag pressure for the trailer and fuel and DEF gauge now uh, this is the mileage and information display I don't remember when Freightliner changed the way they did them I liked the old style but this one's okay it'll tell you at least it gives you instant fuel mileage and things like that. This particular truck has 435, almost 436,000 miles on it. Uh, unfortunately, this is an older truck, so it's got a junky radio. That's my iPad that I edit the, these videos on. And I uh, keep my cell phone holder right there for shooting my daily videos. The way it's positioned, I can just tell Siri to turn the camera on and uh, I can start talking. And that is my Garmin Diesel uh, 530 GPS. It's a little dark but oh well and uh, that's a really good one and right here oh it's on this is uh, the MCP 200 uh, Qualcomm unit I, I really like this thing it's a lot better than people net uh, at least the people net I'm used to uh, it's got a lot more detail and you got a lot more things it can do um, I think I'll do a video on the MP MCP eventually but uh, not right now but right now it shows that uh, I've been uh, in off-duty mode for four hours and 36 minutes and it shows that it's now 1 36 in the afternoon <clears throat> and I have eight hours of driving available but I'm not really gonna go anywhere this is a Wabco uh, Michelin uh, tire system what it does is it monitors the air pressure on the steers and drives of the tractor providing the stems 
are in place and it'll tell you if your tractor tires get uh, low on pressure or if they get over pressured um, and uh, if they're under pressure generally the system will alert you that it's airing them up or trying to anyway the uh, thing below it this little blue thing is the on guard it's a radar system that enables you uh, well not really enables you it kind of hinders you to a certain extent um, but it's a safety device to keep you from rear-ended people and I've seen videos where uh, guys haven't been paying attention that thing went off and it uh, engaged the brakes and uh, even at uh, less than 100 feet and was able to stop the truck I don't recommend that once it starts beeping start paying attention what the heck you're doing everything else is pretty much standard um, these trucks don't have uh, uh, airlift um, systems where you can drop the airbags to, to release a trailer I'm not sure why they don't do have that but I wish they did but it does have a, a interlock for differential um, it also has for a fifth wheel slide this switch here is for the Bendix uh, lane control system basically the truck buzzes at you when you cross a line or you get too close to the shoulder or whatever and it does it by using that camera right there which monitors the lane markings on roads what that also does is it also records uh, 10 seconds or 15 seconds before and after a collision um, if it detects one based on g-force ratings so that's that's kind of to protect me so like someone pulls in front of me slams on their brakes and I end up rear ended them that will prove that it wasn't my fault um, other than that it's got regular dashes for light controls and and engines engine overrides and stuff like that now if you'll notice this well the floor is dirty for one thing but <laughs> this truck doesn't have a gear shifter it's not a standard it is an automatic and that is controlled right here with this paddle and it does have the ability to uh, it's kind of hard to see um, go into manual mode I can shift it like a regular truck by going up and down but automatic is where it gets its best fuel mileage and actually amazingly enough the computer that controls that thing is pretty good it can get a little flaky on some hills but uh, not very often I've only had once or twice where I've said yeah you're not doing it right and switched it to manual and did it myself so uh, this particular plug right here runs up to control give power to all my stuff up here um, that's one of my vapor batteries and of course the the, the uh, GPS up there that blue box right there is the easy pass um, for way stations uh, it also is a toll tag for most freeways and then I got an Oklahoma tag down there I don't have my Texas tag yet they were supposed to mail it to my house and I haven't gotten it yet alrighty um, of course this truck has an air ride seat in the driver's seat but the passenger seat is fixed and if you're wondering yes that is a stuffed pug that is Frankie Frankie I've talked about him in my videos a couple times um, that stuffed uh, pug is the embodiment of the spirit of my past pug who rode with me uh, for years and passed away uh, last summer at the ripe old age of 14 I think <laughs> yeah, it's 14. that cooler is actually empty I just keep it uh, in case something happens uh, I have my own refrigerator right here it's a dorm room refrigerator from Walmart cost uh, 97 dollars I think and it's plugged into 12 volt power back there in the corner um, I have my own refrigerator because I hate to have uh, hot drinks and I like to keep food in here without having to eat at truck stops um, most trucks after, from 2015 Ford for Maverick have built-in refrigerators and they go in that spot right there I could have bought a refrigerator that fit in there but I didn't want to spend eight hundred dollars I would rather spend ninety seven dollars so with that that's where regular refrigerator go there's some power outlets and stuff in the back that right there is an emergency chemical toilet in case I'm stuck somewhere and I got to go really 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 bad I don't use it very often I haven't used it in a while as a matter of fact this space right here is for a television set I don't have a TV I have a microwave and this is a Proctor Stylex 700 watt microwave cost about $30 at Walmart it works awesome one thing to remember if you want to eat popcorn make sure you use the popcorn button otherwise it will burn your popcorn okay uh, that right there is my Bluetooth speaker for my iPad for when I'm watching uh, movies 
This cabinet up here, I keep all my safety equipment in and extra hand towels for when I'm working. Um, I got a couple of hard hats, bunch of towels, all my ball caps are up there, etc. Cetera, et cetera. There's another cabinet back behind the refrigerator down there. I don't use it. I was storing the cooler in there, but I found that moving the refrigerator to put the cooler back when I didn't need it was becoming too much of a trouble. And I'm not got I don't have any riders, so there you go. Uh, this is my bunk. It is a standard twin size. Um, I put regular, my guys just put throw a sleeping bag down. I got regular sheets with uh, two uh, blankets on it. I have two because I like to have a heavy weight. I'm a chest sleeper, so I like to have weight on my back. Um, but one problem about trucks in general is the mattresses, unless you special order them, generally do not fit the bunks themselves. So what I do is I bought went to Walmart and I bought two of these body pillows and covers and I shove them down in the spaces on both sides you can see the other one back there um, to close up the space so the mattress doesn't move back and forth uh, when I when uh, I sleep that is a passenger restraint net if you have if you're two people in this truck which why they would want two people in this truck if one person's driving the other person's sleeping for their losses they have to have that over their body and it plugs into some hooks right down there up top you have more cabinets there's three of them there's two closed and one open this one right here I keep um, some extra food in and things like that I also keep my dishwasher soap coffee mug and uh, some extra towels one note <coughs> if you plan on eating on your own in the truck and you like to have sandwiches like I do <coughs> um, when you buy bread you don't have to buy expensive bread you can buy this is just plain old Walmart white for some reason if you keep in a truck at least I found this you keep the bread in a sealed up properly and in a dark area, it will last. That particular loaf right there, and I had a sandwich earlier off of it, uh, is three weeks old. And it tastes just as fresh as it did the first day I bought it. It's really, really weird. Maybe it's just me. This is a center Oprah cabinet. I keep all my extra food in here. And I got everything crammed in here right now. But I got crackers and soups and uh, popcorn in the back and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, this third cabinet is my junk cabinet. I just have all kinds of stuff in here. My toaster, uh, toilet paper in case I go to a rest restroom that doesn't have any, uh, trash bags, my messenger bag, uh, paper towels, cleaning supplies, or stuff out there. All right, on this side, this is going to be difficult because of the way it's shaped. Ugh. Over here, this is a long cabinet. And I keep all my clothes in here. Well, most of them. I hang everything. I used to not. Uh, all my pants, shirts, everything. I used to keep everything folded, but I keep them hung now. And I bought this little plastic cabinet to store my skivvies and my socks in. It cost $3. At where else? Wally World. And there's another, there's, of course, there's a desk with a pen tray and storage. I keep all my extra bills and stuff in here. And then a writing desk. I don't really use the writing this part because it's not stable and then there's another storage cabinet down here and I keep my shorts down there and the extra set of sheets that's it that open bear, um, area down there down here that right there is uh, air is the air exhaust and that is air intake for the park smart battery operated uh, APU and speaking of that all the controls for it are right back here Two air vents, one on top, one on top, and they got this reading light in here, but I've never used it. Um, there's a clock with a built-in with an alarm in it, 12 volt power. This is a temperature sensor, so it knows the temperature in here. This is the actual uh, controller for the temperature in back here, and that's the on-off switch for Park Smart. That's the fan speed, and then we have lighting controls because there's lights all over this thing. There's two sets of ceiling lights. There's two corner lights. There's even a floor lamp. Now, I'm sorry if that's not really good in focus. I apologize about that. And that's pretty much it. That's the inside of uh, the truck. Oh, well, there's stuff up here, too. Um, you got soft bin and a soft bin up here, or what's called mesh bins, where you can keep stuff. This up here is called the map deck. You know, I keep my overhead, I keep my Ram and Alley maps, any paper maps I have. I also keep all my truck stop books up in there. <coughs> Excuse me. The CB radio. I have a Cobra, um, the, one of the newer ones, 29 LTDs. 
and the light keeps fading. Um, this is a cabinet. I keep, uh, well, I keep my badge hanging off of it, but I keep uh, snack foods in there, a sunglass holder, which I have a flashlight in it, and then two more uh, mesh areas for controlling stuff. There's also a glove box right there, but in my glove box, um, I keep power cables for all my electronics and stuff. So that's it. That's the inside of the truck. Quick, dirty, and very simple. Um, the difference between my truck and some of the other trucks in the fleet is that uh, they're almost done getting rid of all the 12s and the 12s are just like the 13s and it's just a couple hundred 13s they need to get rid of. Starting with the 14s, some of the later 14s, and all the 15s, 16s, and of course the 17s. They have built-in refrigerators and some newer technologies that, that this truck doesn't have. But as far as cabinetry goes and the layouts, they're all exactly the same. There is absolutely no difference interior-wise. Um, the only thing I can think of, and this is a Freightliner issue, not a Maverick issue, is that Freightliner is still building cabinets and spaces for tube-type televisions. Uh, you stopped being able to buy tube televisions in, I think, like 2011, 2012. And uh, you can't even buy them anymore. Um, you know, there's ones that look like them, but they're not tube. Everything's flat screen now. I think what Freightliner needs to do is they need to adjust the TV cabinet to make it more open and then add a standard flat screen TV mount uh, to the uh, wall um, so people can so people can mount their get their TVs and mount them. I know a lot of guys that have them here and they have to come up with ingenious mounting solutions because we're not allowed to modify the trucks in any way. Um, you know, putting it, putting you know, installing a, a flat screen mount because that would require drilling holes uh, through the cabinet sides and things like that. And we're not allowed to do it. I've seen some pretty ingenious things, guys, using uh, angle iron and things like that, and suspending it from the bottom of the upper cabinets, and just different kinds of things. So, some of the trucks that are like this actually have two bunks. They don't have these upper cabinets. There's another bunk that's fixed, more or less, that a student can sleep in. Those are the old trainer trucks. Um, I kind of wish I had one of those simply because it would give me the space to have a bed uh, in case my son or my wife wanted to ride with me. As it stands right now, my son really can't ride with me because we can't sleep in the same bed. But one thing, we're both too big for a twin. And uh, my, me and my wife sleep in the same bed that small would, well, one, we wouldn't get any sleep. <laughs> and then again, we wouldn't get any sleep. So there you go. Uh, that's pretty much it. There's really no other differences. Um, Maverick is all Freightliners. Uh, we got a couple of uh, ICs that have Kenworths, but they came from a company that Maverick acquired. So if you have any questions about the truck itself, ask away, and I will be more than happy to answer any questions. Oh, uh, it's a t uh, just to let you know, it's a 10-speed, 435 horse. Some of the and the 17s are 12s. And there are a few 13s, I think, in the 16s, but I'm not sure. So, thanks for watching. Keep the shiny setup, 73s. Have a great day.